Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here, welcome to another video. As you can see, I have resurfaced my workstation. It gets an awful lot of use. Uh, it is in pretty much every video. Uh, I use it for recording most of my material here and a lot of building for these videos. And is also the surface on which I do an awful lot of work for clients. Uh, stuff that you've already seen, uh, so I don't bother recording it, or uh, work that I'm doing that really isn't interesting enough to warrant its own video. So it had picked up an awful lot of uh, nicks and scrapes and stains and also little patches of dried acrylic. Uh, when I do the welding, uh, sometimes the methylene chloride will wick through the joint I'm welding and then it seeps down onto the table. And because it carries a little bit of acrylic with it, once that has evaporated, it leaves little patches of uh, well, shiny dried acrylic. Uh, so it didn't really need to be resurfaced at this point. But, like as I said uh, in a number of videos earlier, I am in the process of doing a lot of renovations in the fish room. And I wanted to test out how well it resurfaced. Because I have some wooden projects I have coming up. And I wanted to know whether it was fine to build them out of the hardwood plywood that I used in this. Or to go to uh, solid wood. So, the reason I'm concerned about it is hardwood plywood only has about the top slightly less than an eighth of an inch uh, that is of higher quality wood and if you're going to resurface it obviously uh, you're going to have to sand it down and then do the refinishing and I was concerned that it would not look as nice as the original setup and obviously if you go to uh, a solid wood type build uh, you have an awful lot more material there anyway as it turns out as you saw there it is perfectly fine uh, it wasn't difficult to do. Uh, the reason why you see me doing the work here currently on a piece of scrap wood is because I actually have just finished doing the resurfacing and it takes a little, uh, well, more than about a day, day and a half, sometimes two days for the boiled linseed oil to cure properly. Uh, so I just didn't want to end up messing it up right away. It's not because I want it to stay pristine or anything. It is a workstation after all. So... The other change I've made is I'm using my camera gimbal over this because I was noticing uh, with the positioning of the workstation currently, there was a bit of a shadow near the back end of the, or in your case, the top end of the screen. And I wanted to eliminate that, so I'm using, I'm uh, trying this out at least uh, for the moment. We'll see how that all goes. So while I've been talking to you about uh, those sorts of things, what I'm making here is a very basic, basic bell siphon. The reason being is I want to get into uh, doing a little bit of aquaponics. Uh, nothing on any kind of grand scale or anything. Uh, I don't really need to grow all my own vegetables or anything. Uh, but I do want to test it out as an augment uh, for filtering aquariums. Uh, recently I've done an awful lot of planter filter style builds. Uh, the high humidity ones and the rainforest build, uh, the reverse flow hob, that sort of stuff. And this is kind of just an extension of that. Uh, aquaponics uh, uses um, fish that are usually food fish as well, by the way, but uh, we'll get into that. Uh, they use fish uh, being fed and filtered, and then that nutrient rich water is what is used to uh, grow plants. And then part of that process is an ebb and flow filtration system. Pretty much what happens is the plants are in a bed, uh, that bed gets flooded with water, and then it drains, and then that whole process uh, repeats itself. And then the way you do that is uh, with a bell siphon. Uh, not this simplistic version, uh, but this simplistic version is the easiest way for me to demonstrate to you how they work. So we're going to start with this. Uh, I may not actually end up using this at all, uh, but you'll notice there's a little bit of a hole, a uh, one-inch hole down by my right hand there. Uh, I'm going to cap that off for the moment, but in the long term I'm going to use uh, this basic model up against a proper one, uh, just to show you how uh, the, well, fancier versions, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, how they work a lot better than uh, this basic one. The problem with these ones here, like this style, is 
so much depends on first off the size of that uh, drain pipe and then of course the size of uh, the cap pipe which is the one I'm putting in there now which will get glued to this uh, plate I'm putting across the top and also the flow rate that goes through it the amount of water you put in and this style requires probably a bit more flow than aquaponics would like uh, and actually it is probably about on line with the old uh, wet dry filters. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you guys remember them. Uh, it was quite some time ago. They were quite popular. Uh, they worked on bell siphons as well. And what would happen is you would uh, fill up a bed full of uh, some sort of biomedia. Uh, and as that filled up, uh, a bell siphon would trigger. And it would drain it down and the whole process would repeat. Uh, exactly the same as aquaponics, just on a much uh, much faster uh, rate. Uh, you'll see as this thing gets uh, fired up. So what I've done here is I've cut all the pieces, I've glued in the standpipe which is going to drain, and I've placed, uh, but yet to uh, weld, the, uh, the piece of pipe that's going to form the bell, because it's going to get uh, welded to the base of this plate here, and I'm raising it off the bottom. So I'm using two pieces of uh, wood cut to the same length as my parallels uh, so I can glue that surface on and then it's going to pull them out here. And then I'm going to flip this whole thing over and I am going to weld on uh, the bell part. So like I said, this is really, really straightforward. Uh, this is an easy, easy build and of course the reason why I'm putting it out of acrylic is it is really visual. You can build this out of anything. You can build it out of PVC pipe, uh, you can ABS, uh, whatever you like, because uh, the principle doesn't rely on you being able to see what's going on. It just relies on a siphon forming, and then that siphon, as it drains down, being broken. And that's all there is to it. That, that is how simple these things are. So, I am going to weld this in place. Uh, and we're going to fire this thing up. Nothing, I'm just going to put it over a bucket and uh, we're going to... Uh, oops. Uh, this, fortunately this doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not uh, going to be used for anything except a few things in the fish room just to test against a proper bell siphon. Uh, so anything with a little bit of movement and that sort of stuff is not really that important. So. Like I said, bell siphons uh, of this style are really dependent on flow rate. And uh, the next clip that's coming up where I actually uh, test this out and run it, uh, the first part I'm going to show you simply because I had the flow rate too low. And what happened is it came to an equilibrium. The uh, container would fill up and uh, come up to the edge of that pipe, start to flow down, but didn't quite have enough of the flow rate to uh, create a siphon. Actually, if any of you guys want to see what an old uh, ebb and flow filter looks like, or wet dry filter, however you want to look at it, uh, leave a comment below. I know there's at least one person who wants to see me hook up uh, an ebb and flow. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can get this to work in that style of filter, and if you guys want to see that, uh, like I said, just leave a comment, and if there's enough interest, I'll uh, definitely hook this up as that. Uh, it won't be used for aquaponics, though. It's, uh, it requires too high a flow rate. I'm definitely going to need to build uh, a, a much more sophisticated system that will be able to handle uh, the lower flow rates. So here we go. We're going to hook this up. This is the failure. Uh, this is the first time I um, fired it up, and I was using uh, too low a flow rate. And you're going to see it's going to want to start the siphon, but it's not going to quite get there. Also, I think part of the problem is the way I have the flow going in here. It was causing a bit of turbulence on the bottom. Uh, but all those sorts of things uh, can be worked out. So here we go. We're going to go up to the top here now. And then you can see it's going to want to form. You can see you can see it right at the top of the water line there. It just It's constricting. It's just not getting there. Uh, it's actually kind of funny that way. So it's just a simple matter of adjusting the flow rate. And I'm going to get it right here in the next clip. So this is pretty much the end of the video. You get to see this thing cycle a few times. And uh, that's pretty much it for uh, today. And as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe. 
Definitely leave me lots of comments on this. Uh, this is a new style uh, of build that I haven't done before for you guys. Uh, so let me know what you think of it. And you can see, it. there you go. See how it just constricts just enough and then it forms a siphon and then off it goes and it just drains the whole thing down. And if you want to see this in a wet dry filter, let me know. And if you have uh, ideas for, I mean, there are so many different ways of building bell siphons. Uh, if you have a particular version that you like, uh, leave a comment and uh, I'll test that out as well. So here we go again, round number two. And <laughs> I like this. That's the neat thing about doing this in clear acrylic. You get to see that constriction at the top of the neck there. It's really a kind of a cool look to it uh, just before it catches and then the siphon forms and then down it goes. And then of course you get the burp at the bottom and then it does it all over again. One more time. I really actually, like I said, this is actually kind of cool looking. Just that part there. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video, and bye for now.